Well, hello and welcome to this weekly update here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, we did see the markets break above the opening range bullish mode uh, or into opening range bullish mode, breaking above the upper line there at 3972.96 on the SPX. So certainly in bullish mode, certainly above the 200 day simple moving average on the daily chart which has acted as resistance here here and here has finally broken above that so they are all bullish developments no doubt about that and if we look at the downward sloping channel line that we've has been in play since uh, January last year so over 12 months uh, we've broken above that as well so all of those things are bullish and we certainly um, are seeing from a technical point of view markets moving higher the thing that would stop me from jumping into any bullish trades right now is the fact that the Federal Reserve will be speaking this week, right? That's one of two things that would stop me from placing a lot of trades this week. So the Federal Reserve will be speaking on Wednesday, the 1st of February. Uh, we've got the statement from the Federal Reserve. We've got uh, their, you know, whether they're going to raise rates, which they probably will by 0.25%. And then obviously the press conference. So most people have factored in the fact that you know, the Federal Reserve will raise rates by 0.25%. That's not the issue. The wild card is, what is Jerome Powell going to say? Uh, we've seen a pretty strong start to the year, like we've just been talking about, with the markets moving higher. Uh, Jerome Powell probably won't like that. When the markets are higher, when they move up, people feel richer, they spend more. He doesn't want that with inflation. So he, because of the big increase that we've seen in the um, in this month, in January, right, the the January effect is coming into effect, you probably would see him maybe being a little more aggressive with his wording, trying to keep a, a lid on the market, not allowing it to have a huge run higher here. While most things from a technical point of view are pointing higher, uh, along with risk assets like Bitcoin. I mean, my, um, my view was that this is going to move higher. And it's exactly what's happened. We're at 23,400 US a coin right now. And everything in Bitcoin is pointing to the upside as well. There's a whole range of bullish factors here. Breaking above the 200 for the first time since the, the bear market um, has occurred. Uh, the average length of a bear market is ex the length of time is where we're at right now. So you know, pretty much due for a move higher here. Um, the percentage drop that we've seen in Bitcoin is pretty much consistent with lows that we've seen in previous bear markets. Whole range of things are pointing to the fact that Bitcoin and the markets will move higher here. However, when the Federal Reserve is coming out to talk, um, we have to be cautious because while we're factoring in the fact they're going to raise rates by 0.25%, we don't know what they're going to say. Now, I don't want to place trades on what someone may or may not say. <laughs> I mean, he may try and keep the markets down because of the fact that the um, the stock market has had a big increase, right? He'll try and keep a lid on that, perhaps. Or he'll look at the, the actual um, inflation rate and go, well, you know what? The CP lie number, the manipulated number, they tell us, has come from 9.1% down to 6.5%, right? It is moving down. That's a good sign. What we're doing, he may say, uh, Jerome Powell, may say, look, what we're doing is working. It's bringing down inflation. This is beautiful. The plan's working. We don't need to be aggressive. We see a point in time in the future where we may... Pause rate raises, a point, uh, a pause rate rises, uh, something like that. And that could see the markets move up dramatically along with Bitcoin. But if he is very aggressive and really says his wording is very much about the fact that he's leaving the door open to raise rates aggressively, the fight for inflation is not finished yet, we have, you know, uh, something like that, that could really hurt Bitcoin, could really hurt the markets. So we don't know what's going to happen here. The other thing occurring is the fact that we've got earnings coming up. We're in the middle of earnings season, some pretty big companies reporting earnings as well, not small companies, we're talking Apple reporting this week, Google, Amazon, Meta, ExxonMobil, huge companies reporting earnings. So not only have you huge companies reporting earnings, which may or may not be good, they're forward, forward guidance for the next three months, it may or may not be positive, and then you've got the Federal Reserve speaking, it's a pretty good week 
to sit on the sidelines, right? Pretty smart move. Now, we've had quite a few really good winning trades. I'll just show you a couple of them. Uh, one of them was NVIDIA with call options to the upside. That has been a huge, a hugely successful trade, right? So that is just an absolute great trade that we have. Uh, we are closing out now. Why? The Federal Reserve will be speaking, right? So we've closed. We're going to close that winning trade out, which has been fantastic. Um, MicroStrategy, another trade that we had on uh, with call options. Look at this move uh, from around 150 to 274. We've made an absolute fortune on the call options on both NVIDIA and MicroStrategy. The profits that we've made on those, what we may do right now is just close those out. Lock the profits in your bank account where they're safest, right? Let the major earnings come out for the, some of the biggest companies in the stock market and the Federal Reserve say what they're going to say and then we could re-enter positions if we choose to or look to get into different positions. So that's probably the smartest way to do it. Uh, take profits right now, let the Federal Reserve come out, let the earnings come out this week and then we get into new positions for next week. Uh, something that is on my watch list is Netflix. Now Netflix had earnings recently and they weren't great earnings but they did have strong growth in their paid subscribers so it did have a move up initially but if you have a look at this I'm looking for this to move to the downside right so but not ahead of a Federal Reserve meeting right but you can see it's up against this uh, upward sloping uh, trend line here that's acting as resistance it's overbought right now uh, we have a gap to fill down here at about 320 we've got a support level about 330 which would coincide with uh, this gap back here as well so I'm looking for it to move below 340 Okay, I think it could easily come down to that support level of 330 if it breaks that, uh, probably 320. Uh, so I see that starting to move lower now. It's up against that trend line and it's overbought. So that could very easily happen. Now, if you wanted to be aggressive with something like that, again, for me personally, I'm sitting on the sidelines. I wouldn't place any trades this week. I've made incredible money on MicroStrategy and NVIDIA along with some other trades. Uh, why would I enter a new position right now now this is a relatively small trade not a lot of risk you could enter it if you are willing to put say two hundred dollars of risk for one contract now what it is it's a put debit spread so what you're going to do with the stock around 360 again my view sit on the sidelines don't do anything but if you had to place a trade um, I would look for it to get below 340 for the next 47 days, right? So giving yourself plenty of time, buying yourself the gift of time, entering it on Monday the 30th of the 1st. I would buy the 350, sell the 340 put on Netflix for the 17th of the 3rd expiry. Cost around $335 a contract. Potential uh, profit there is 665, so almost a 200% return on risk, which is fantastic. I like to have these as set and forget. So I would have a bracket order set here where I've got a stop loss, um, you know, making sure I don't take a huge loss on the trade, and then also a profit taker. So if it does become profitable and move in the direction, in this case down, I can be closed out automatically. A set and forget automatic trade, which is exactly what we want with asymmetrical risk. What's that? That means the potential reward is much higher than the risk we're taking to achieve the reward, right? Or the profit. So in this case, it's a three to one asymmetrical risk skewed in our favor. $600 if we're right for one contract of this spread and $200 if we're wrong. Okay, so that's uh, a potential idea that you could set up. Now, I'm traveling for the next couple of weeks and then I will be back home. When I'm back home, I'm going to be switching the way that I do this um, these weekly updates. I'm going to be focusing on education and showing you guys the specific strategies, how they work, what's the mechanics, how you set them up. A lot of people have been asking me to do that, and I'm going to do that. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. There's some fantastic strategies out there you can make a lot of money with without taking huge amounts of risk. There is that misconception out there. You've got to take a lot of risk to make a lot of money or make a big return. Rubbish. You just need to understand the strategies and understand how to set them up correctly and professionally and obviously always respect risk. So we'll talk about that more next week. This is a potential idea. It's aggressive. Uh, the reason it's aggressive is because you've got Federal Reserve meeting coming up and massive earnings coming up. Uh, probably not the best time to place it. But if you had to place a trade, that would be something that I would be looking at. But locking in the profits there with MicroStrategy and NVIDIA. Uh, happy days, right? Great trades. Uh, members very 
happy with those positions that we got into as well. So there's some ideas for you. That's what I'm looking at right now, sitting on the sidelines more than anything else. Let's see what the Federal Reserve says. Not so much what they do, but what they say, uh, and uh, very importantly, how the market reacts to it. Have a look at the earnings from some of the biggest companies in the market, and then we'll have a lot more clarity next week to get into some positions with higher probabilities. All right, my friends, thank you so much for listening. All the best, and bye for now.